would have made it difficult. As they are the ones who. It's a, it's a nice link. On the one side, the spies are saying we're going in, but there are giants in the land, and the other side's going, we've got giants, but he just beat our God. Yeah. Who's more scared right now? <laughs> the Morim, the Canaanites, right? It was at that time that Adonai said to Joshua, make yourselves nice of flint and circumcise the people of Israel again <coughs> a second time. Yeah. Any other translation? Anybody like same. to go through circumcision twice? <laughs> no? <laughs> no takers? <laughs> what was it? It was the second generation that hadn't been circumcised. Right. Remember that for some unknown reason, all of a sudden we've got this group of people that have not been circumcised. But you're coming into the land that was a given as a promise, as a covenant. That was part of Abraham's covenant, and a covenantal sign needs to be there. Let's put it to you on, on this day. I give my wife an engagement ring, tell her on that day I will be there, and I'm going to come to her hus become her husband. And she gets there, and she doesn't have that promise ring on her finger. Where, where, where's your engagement ring? And I think I lost it. <laughs> Anybody extremely happy at that time? Are you not taking this seriously enough? Is this a joke to you? Now, we also have an interesting play where Moses himself had to have a little moment, stopped in the middle of the desert on the way to do the Pesach and the plagues and the things, and he comes up and God stops him and he goes, let's have a conversation. You die, or we get some circumcisions going on. His wife stepped in. Right, the blight, the bridegroom of blood. Mm -hmm. Nice. Lovely, lovely imagery. You cannot go to a covenantal people without the covenant sign. You cannot go and establish my covenant and their inheritance if you don't even take the sign seriously. Men, it's at this point where you normally cringe and don't listen, but you're going to have to listen. Circumcision is a mitzvah. The only thing holding you back from the mitzvah <coughs> are you going to establish what you want? Is this what God wants? What do you want? He stops the program. You've walked across the Jordan. Stop the bus. I'm parking you at a place called Round or Rolling and we're going to have a conversation. <laughs> I don't have to draw more pictures than that. Roll away. Roll away the stigma of your past and other stuff that has to happen. <laughs> so Yahushua made himself knives of flint and circumcised the people of Israel at Kivat Ha'alot, the hill of four skins. So a lot of people not going into that. What do you say? If the imagery doesn't gross you up, the rest of it does. <laughs> yeah, just like David. Eh? The reason Yahushua circumcised, well, the reason Yahushua circumcised was that all the people who had left Egypt, who were males, all the fighting men had died in the desert along with the way of leaving Egypt. For although all the people who left Egypt had been circumcised, all those who had been born in the desert on the way, as they went on from Egypt, had not been circumcised. Now, I find that interesting. Yeah. You're in bondage, and you remember the sign of the covenant. He pulls you out of bondage, and you forget who you are. Mm. At eight day old, you should have done it. Yeah. Why didn't you? Well, the question was, you asked me about that, because they are on the move. And that might be one thing, but on, when you're on the move, he had them stop and they didn't do anything for that period of time. So if you're on the move, you would start the bleeding, etc. So um, the camp is moving, you're not going to stop to do, to do that at that point in time. Fair enough, but how, how much moving is an eight day old boy going to be doing? Stop. So he's been carried around, moved around. Can uh, we get away from it? It's not a full grown man that you're talking about. Is it going to be comfortable for Baba? Probably not. Bernardo's and creams and things and that are not there. But how far will you have to go in what you want to establish? What are they establishing? Then the question would be 
then Moshe would not have been a Okay, He knew about it, he, didn't, he then didn't implement it. So, um, was there no conversation about it in that time? If the father had spoken to them about all of the other stuff that they were not doing right, if that was a problem, why did he not address it the first time around? Fair enough. But we also have to ask the question, if they're so busy moaning and so busy fighting about water, each other, everything else, is the sign of the covenant top of the list? No, your hearts are already stubborn, your hearts are broken, you're going against them. If we were to be kind to the people of Israel, we would say, it's a traveling problem. If we were to be looking at what's going on here, we have to ask him, why was this never done? But God, in his wisdom, now again, we don't see this. Why? You can't see that. I'm going to do pictures for you. They come across and they cross over from this side. They come into the land. They park at Gilgal. Jericho's just a little bit further down. Nice big city. And you sit down and you come across. Now, if we understand that circumcision is not a pleasant thing to go through in those times. We have a biblical reference of the city of Shechem, right? Mm -hmm. The men could not lift up a sword and fight because of the sign. So they walked up and they were just all slaughtered. Simeon and Levi, go check it out. They come across and God, in His infinite wisdom, doesn't get them to do it here. Where they're safe and they're protected by a fast flowing river. He gets them to jump into the water. Brings them across where everybody is open and they're free to attack. And he goes, let's have a conversation. All of your men are going to be considered useless. But don't worry, this is going to be a good thing for you. Tactically. Not making sense. The art of war is, is wrong here. Eh? <laughs> it's just bad timing. It's just the wrong place. It's something that... In your natural mind, you would say, no. But I was teaching you something again. Do you trust me enough to protect you even in the midst of it? Do you trust me enough? When I put you there, I will keep you safe. Your focus is not about crossing and going to war. Your focus is crossing and stop. I love this about the book of Joshua. He gets them there. And they're all excited to get there. Well, it's been a while, 40 years of wondering, right? <laughs> to get them across, and then he just says, stop your bus, have a cup of tea, and just breathe where you are right now. <laughs> just take a breath. And I've seen this a lot, it happens when you go to Israel, you take people on tour, and it's this bold, we're going to the Holy Land, the Holy Land, and they get there, and then they either become so completely detached from the point, they've been thinking about it for a lot, and then they get there, and they're just like, okay, this like, well, what, what is this? But if you just take a moment and you reprogram your brain, this has only been a promise 400 plus years in the making. And you're actually here. Abraham would have been doing a jig, dancing over there, welcoming his family into the land that God had promised him if he was there. But you're so focused on what you want to achieve and getting up and going to take cities and doing all the rest of it. And he says, stop. Let's take care of your heart first. Again, do you trust me? Right? Um, where am I? Six. Yeah. Because the people of Israel walked 40 years in the desert until the whole nation, that is, the fighting men who had left Egypt had died out, because they had not heeded what Adonai said. Adonai had sworn that he would not allow them to see the land which Adonai swore to their ancestors that he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey. Because they disobeyed, they never went in. So he raised up the children to take their place, and it was these men whom Yahshua circumcised. Till then, they had been uncircumcised, because they had not been circumcised while traveling. So it's a possibility. But the parents were also not in line. When all the nation had been circumcised, every one of them, they stayed where they were in camp until they were healed. Adonai said to Yosho, today I have rolled off from you the stigma of Egypt. 
You are not belonging to them anymore. Understand, a covenantal sign, you belong to a covenant with a God, and this is a covenantal place. <coughs> this is why the place has been called Gilgal, rolling ever since. The people of Israel camped at Gilgal. They observed Pesach on the 14th day of the month. They're, they're on the plains of Jericho. Now, isn't that interesting? Four days ago, they were lying in a puddle. Crossed water, circumcision party, four days later, get up and feast. Slaughter the lamb, prepare it, get ready. <coughs> now, hang on a second. You said you were coming out to conquer people. And now we get across and you're telling me to sit down and feast? Hmm. Why did I bring you out? Why did I bring you out with an outstretched arm? For this place, for this time, for this purpose. Remember my times. Prepare the place for the presence of my enemies. Uh, that's not exactly what that means. He's talking about reconciliation. The day after Pesach, they ate what the land produced. Matzah had, had roast, oh, sorry. Matzah and roasted ears of grain that day. The following day, they had eaten food produced in the land. The manna ended. Who planted the harvest? Who gave it exactly the amount of sunshine and rain and fertile soil to know? Tell me how doesn't prepare the way. He got, oh, my kids are coming. They need food. And all of a sudden, the miraculous provision stops because the promised provision has come to it. Right. Yeah. All those people that were in the land, the Canaanites, were thinking, wow, we've had an awesome harvest this year. Yeah, and they were, they were hiding so they couldn't go and harvest it. <laughs> the following day, they ate the food produced on the land, and then the manna ended. From then on, the people of Israel no longer ate manna. Instead, that year, they ate the produce of the land of the Canaanite. One, one day, when Joshua was there by Jericho, he raised his eyes and looked, and in front of him stood a man with drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went over to him and asked him, Are you on our side or on the side of our enemies? Okay, so he's post on watchman duty. He sees someone come up with a sword in his hand. Okay, simple question. Am I cutting you down or you come to cut me down? What's your story? No, he replied, but I am the commander of Adonai's army. I have come just now. Yoshua fell down with his face to the ground and worshipped him. Then asked, what does my Lord have to say to his servant? The commander of Adonai's army answered Joshua, take the sandals off your feet because the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Now this is very strange. Right, what happens when people worship angels in scripture? And what does an angel normally tell them? Get up. I'm a servant like you. I'm a servant just like you. Get up, get up, get up, get up. And yet somehow this angel goes silence. Then he says something. Take up your sandals. Now remember we were talking about the prep of Joshua, and how many times do you think Moses told him about the commission at Sinai? There was a burning bush, you see? And I went to go check it out, you see. And it wasn't being burnt up. And then there was this voice. And then I started to stutter. There is this voice that tells him, take off the sandals of your feet. You're standing on holy ground. I just want to hear, what makes that ground holy? The presence of the person who's there. Presence of Remember, Moses goes back up to Mount Sinai again the second time, and he's walking up and down the mountain. doesn't say he took a few cents. Right? But when he went up further into the presence of God, only at the top, you can go to Mount Sinai today, and you'll be looking around and there's nothing there. Just like if you go get baptized in the Jordan, if you're looking for the dove to come down, 
you might be sorely disappointed. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't happen. Like I said, all I got was water up my nose. I, there was no voice from heaven. But because God is standing in that midst, He who is holy, 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 He's the one who's standing there. Because He's there, the place is holy. When He leaves, it's not anymore. Okay? So he goes and he comes in. We see these interesting parallels again in Revelation. Okay? This looks like, because of the response of what's going on, it has to be decided. He is going to go out. Remember in Revelations, what is the point? We parallel three books in, in, in it was Joshua. Joshua is linked to Acts and is linked to Revelations. You have a physical picture, a spiritual picture, and the fullness of both. Right? And in Revelations, when there's a massive battle taking place near the end, when all the people of the world are coming up against his nation, and someone comes on a cloud. Daniel 7 talks about him coming. Behold, I see the Son of Man. Someone like the Son of Man. When Messiah refers to himself as that, he's giving an illustration to what Daniel saw in Daniel 7. Coming on a cloud. In fact, he also tells Caiaphas, there's a Caiaphas or a nice. And he's sitting before him and he gives him and he's asking questions. And he goes, you know, you've only been given this authority for a time, but behold, there's a time of coming when the Son of Man will come on the clouds. What he was saying to him was, listen, Buddhi. There's a time coming. Enjoy the time while you're here. If you're not careful, understand. One day, the roles are going to be reversed. I'm going to be the one sitting with all the authority, and you're going to answer to me. When that time comes, he's going to come as a man. He's going to take on the enemies of our world. Who's he facing in the promised land? That's right. The gods of the world, and he's facing those who are going to choose to come up against him. Listen carefully. Joshua becomes a bloody book because of people's stubbornness. They had a choice. Rahab understood that choice. Says to them, you will go out and you will cleanse the land. The instruction is for the Israelites. If you saw Egypt getting decimated, you see Jericho getting decimated. You see the people on the other side, Sichon and Og, massive kingdoms getting decimated. And you choose to pick up a sword and go out and fight. That's your choice. He says, your other option is to leave. I will not give up my land for you. Then you face God. And the enemy is going to face Yeshua who comes up and he goes, I want to show you something here. And I'm just going to touch on this before we go. He's going to give them the battle plan for which city? Jericho. Jericho. And Jericho, we'll go into it, gets destroyed and is get told to the people, what are they supposed to do with it? Destroy, destroy. Destroy it, are they allowed to loot, take anything, does anything belong to them? So what does that set it, set it apart as? First fruits and korban. Something holy unto God that it's His, His, no, lay offering. Something that's completely burnt up. Something that is a standing stone that says God has done this here. The first fruits of the resurrection come from the back plan of the person giving them. The first fruits of conquering death to bring them into the fullness of the inheritance of a land that is prepared for them, a new heaven, new earth, new body. You starting to see some things? Okay. So we have Messiah here, in my view, standing up and saying, listen, you are not going to take on this battle by yourself. You are not going to conquer this in your own strength. This is the gateway to the rest of it. So first I make a way for you. Get rid of your sin. Then I bring you here and we take the <coughs> one thing that's going to stop you from taking the rest of it. I'm going to deal with death. 
If I can remove death, then you can be free to move into your inheritance in the fullness of your relationship with God. Death will be cast into the lake of fire, complete abyss, something that will be completely destroyed or completely burnt out. No one can revolt this. Then you will be able to go free. Is it just some things I'm seeing? Use them, don't use them. Okay? He's preparing the way and he's showing you foreshadows of what he's going to do later. But for Joshua now, there's a man with a sword in his hand and he's ready to go to war. Funny that just after Pesach, when God went to war before, in the time of Omer, what happened in the time of Omer that got Joshua to pull out a sword? The Amalekites came and tried to take. He had to stand up. How did they win that battle? Someone interceding on the top of the mount. The great intercessor, Yeshua himself, is drawing up a battle plan to be able to bring you to the fullness of your inheritance, and no one will be able to stand in the way. Amen. Right. Any other thoughts, questions? Yeah. I just want to ask, um, the train, the taking off of the sandals, because I know there's another place where things done, but is that, is, other than Moses, would the, the sandals with Ruth, would that be the same as this or different sort of scenario? Right. Okay. That, that was a, that's a picture of what, you would not redeem someone to take off one sandal. Yeah. All right. Happiness is? I know, just that in this Bible, that we're in verse 15 where it says, and the captain of the host, yes. um, it has captain in the capital C. So this translates it bigger out, the captain in the capital C, it's probably would have been the, the word, The word here is basically translated as the number one, the authority. So how do you use capital letters when you do it? Well, that's the thing. When you, when you look at it in its original text, it talks about that. So you already think that you understand that, but that means I'm highlighting it for you because it's obviously a translation. But some of the Bibles have a small C, and they would lead you to think that it could have been a head angel or some sort of That's possible. Lots lots of other people also think it could be that, but the response simply doesn't warrant it. Anybody that, any angel that was wanted to be worshipped. Yeah, he would have said, you know, don't worship me, I'm just Unless you ask done, and then you get a box next, but this yeah. is not it, right? So yeah, it's an interesting thing. Alright, um, before we before we go, I want to have you hostage. Um, this week, probably Thursday sunset to Friday night sunset. Remember I said last week, I'm going to call you guys to fast and pray. Giving you a week to process what happened last week. Get your minds around it, understand why we are praying. You guys should have been praying as a matter of interest. I saw a nice influx on Wednesday. Excited me. But how many of you, just show of hands, have been getting, if you've been praying, to get ready? Stick up your hand. I just need to know. Have you guys been receiving it? Well, let's take it up man. If it's something that's continual, I was telling you to get ready. Right? We need to be asking for what? Okay? Like I said to you, this, this, um, the Zambia thing is probably going to be moved in stages. But as we have a time of preparation, are you guys okay? I said to the guys who are going to be, we've got prep time. That we, I want a commitment for a three day a week study. Right? That three day a week study is going to be Wednesday nights as usual, Shabbat morning as usual, and probably what I'm asking is Sunday night. Um, I've spoken to Reno and Nick, they're here normally for youth, so after youth. At six. Yeah, so at Sunday night at about six o'clock, we're going to hammer out topics and find out holes and discuss a whole bunch of things. Is that okay? Is that a good time? I was thinking either Sunday night or Monday night, but Sunday night is better. Sunday night. 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 S
So this is so this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray about it. We're going to go from it. But at, as it stands, if you guys are all happy and those who are being prepped, 